Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the uh, next 10 to 14 days. For today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 23rd of February. And we'll be able to set over your map with the Excel of Airs. And you said, oh, troubles. Maybe run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS B2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us into the first half of March. And I should get on back for you. In a moment, just say back first. Video to say it was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. Please like, share, and subscribe on both of today's videos. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that for Gals Weather. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we put around 60 subscribers, 60, to get ourselves to um, um, 19.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Thursday. Right, let's start off with the Arctic Oscillation. Check this out. The Arctic Oscillation is, uh, well, already very negative just here. And it's going through the floor into the middle of uh, February the next couple of days. Oh, the black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting. The Arctic Oscillation go very, very, very negative. Uh, AO telling us that we've got a large amount of northern blocking within high latitudes. Uh, and that's going to be uh, remaining the case over the next few days as well. By the time we get into the second half of February, though, come towards the end of the month, you actually find the AO spring back up um and going um you know uh, a little bit positive there but a very strange winter very up and down uh winter for the arctic oscillation overall i think the air has probably been training positive through the winter as a whole but with these uh regular periods of you know strongly negative but also briefly negative uh periods so odd winter this uh lots of swings lots of chop Topic and changing, and I suppose it explains the uncertainty within the model output. The NEO have been far less dramatic through this uh, winter. So, again, the black line shows where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation, red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the North Atlantic Oscillation to go. So, uh, we had quite a long run of uh, negative NEO conditions through much of January, especially the first half of the January. And that was like the coldest period of the winter, I suppose, really, wasn't it? During the um, first sort of uh, 10 days or so, first half of January. Uh, then the uh, NEO went uh, largely positive, uh, at the end of January and through uh, much of February. And also the NEA was largely positive through uh, most of December as well. So overall, slightly positive NEO, uh, win NEO winter. And we find that uh, at the moment we're about neutral, really, uh, neither positive nor negative. GFS on some of the forecasting, but we're going to stay close to that neutral line, possibly going more positive with the NEO towards the end of February. So if both the indexes going into positive territory by the end of February, that is a, an, an indication of uh, zonality and also uh, milder weather to uh, end the winter, be Joshua winter and end February as well. For time being, though, uh, winds remain from the east, so uh, we've still got an area of high pressure here on the latest wind map from EarthNorthSchool.net, showing that uh, we've got uh, easterly winds coming in all the way from the Baltic Sea. Actually bringing some slightly colder air in at the moment. It could be quite a cold weekend. Might even be a little bit of snow around in a few places on Sunday, but I don't think it's going to amount to uh, very much. I might try and squeeze a little snow watch tonight. Um, I'll see. Uh, it depends what time I've got this evening. But uh, I might try and squeeze that in. Um, but again, don't think, even if it does snow over the weekend, I don't think it'll amount to uh, very much. But we'll perhaps have a look, a, bit, a look at a bit of high res later on. Central England temperature is uh, sitting at 4.4. Uh, now, uh, just 0.6 of a degree above 61 tonight. Only average in provisional to uh, yesterday to the 12th of February. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. We're going to Banbury today. The red line is the first year upper air temperature average for Banbury. We're starting off around to a little bit below average at the moment. Upper air temperatures are going to be uh, lifting up over the uh, next uh, week or so. 
In fact, by the time you get towards the end of next week, and uh, beyond it, uh, looking very mild, actually, with those up red temps. Not quite that straightforward, because it might still be a bit chilly for a while on the surface. But I think eventually we will bring up uh, some uh, proper mild air from the Atlantic. Bit of a cooling trend uh, within the GFS ensembles as we head towards the beginning of March. We have got quite a few cold members that are clustering. Uh, we have got quite a few um, ensemble members that are cu clustering quite cold there actually. Precipitation wise, lots of dry weather to come over next week, not completely dry, and uh, that's that little area of precipitation looking to on uh, Sunday, potentially to do something a little bit windy, but again, there's not you know, it's not, it doesn't look particularly um, dramatic, I have to say. There might just be a few flakes uh, around uh, on Sunday for a while. Beyond that, to, well, probably turning totally more unsettled through the last week or so of February. So uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, ending February on a wet and windy note. Temperature anomalies. The next five days are coming out colder than average. But if we look at the 10 to 14 day temperature anomaly, then we see a big shift. And we actually go very mild, um, potentially, not just the UK, but through most parts of northern and western Europe as well. So, ch -ch 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 changes on the way. And the seven day precipitation anomaly coming out drier than average. But if we look at the 10 16 day precipitation anomaly, uh, there we see a change, just not necessarily wetter than average, but certainly nearer uh, to normal precipitation, telling us that it is likely to be getting more unsettled into the last week or so of, Ma of uh, February. It's a March show. Uh, right, okay, let's go through uh, the chart data then. Let's have a UK bet. You're a and looking for midnight on Sunday. So still bringing quite a cold easterly throw on Sunday. And that lasts into Monday as well. Changes through next week. Slow and gradual. But we see the wind shifting from that cold south easterly towards a southerly. Uh, that's a mild wind direction, of course. So by the time you get through to the middle next week, it's actually midnight next Thursday. Uh, I think it is turning milder with outbreaks of rain mostly in the west. ICOM again has that southeasterly for the weekend of south next week, shifts that around to southerly, eventually to a southwesterly as we go through the middle of next week. Again, it's turning milder uh, as we go through next week. The KMA uh, again showing those uh, chilly southeasterly winds being replaced by southerly. The southwesterlies as we go through next week. Rather wet and windy there as, we head, as we're heading up towards uh, day 10. But very quick high pressures back in. And that's a nice ridge. That's the 25th of February under a nice area of high pressure. 1,045 millibars. It's a big, uh, intense high pressure as well. But it's built up from the Azores. So I reckon that's a little taste of spring, actually. It might still be quite chilly at night. But by day, I reckon that probably gets the temperature into uh, double digits. And and probably quite a bit of sunshine as well. So by 25th of February, little bit of spring. Do, do, do. And it certainly will be a lot brighter, I think, compared to the dullness of the uh, recent days and weeks. Jeff has been tight run uh, with those chilly southeasterly winds um, for the next uh, few days, turning them into southerly uh, southwesterly winds through the second half of next week. Much milder as we head up towards day 10. We've got high pressure away to the east, low pressure out in the Atlantic, drawing up wind from the uh, Azores. So very mild, uh, really, throughout uh, the second half of next week. And that takes through the month's end as well, with further low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. More unsettled, but Pretty mild as we get to the first day of March. Oh, then what about GFS 6 then? Um, well, it's all much of a muchness, but maybe introducing those milder southerly winds a day or two earlier compared to the midnight run. Certainly by the second half next week, we're drawing in a properly mild southwesterly flow. And uh, that carries on then through into the extended as well. A lot of high pressure, so the answer is always on dry weather. But instead of these chilly conditions we have been experiencing, should be a lot milder and uh, you know, feeling a lot more spring-like. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weathers. Get them to subscribe to. Thanks so much everyone for uh, doing that. 60 subscribers will get us to 19.6k. Um, so if you could give us a sub, that'd be awesome. Thanks so much everyone. Right, GM again with high pressure in the ascendancy on Sunday and Monday, bringing that calm southeasterly flow. 
might take a little bit longer to uh, turn things let's go through next week. Even towards the end of next week, I think like the east of Selfridge might actually still be quite cold. The milder southerly southwest of the airstream is taking a longer time to get in. But eventually we do get there. Upper air temps looking very mild uh, by a day nine. There. Notice all the cold air plunging through the eastern southeastern portion of Europe. That's where... The beast of the east of is are going down to down to Greece and Turkey again. Um, that's day ten uh, with the gem, and by then we have all turned milder with this trough trying to get in from the Atlantic, turn things more and settle. And then finally the east gem are rounding it all off with the uh, chilly southeasterly winds through the weekend and into next week, shifting them around to southerly southwesterly around Wednesday to Thursday, which will be uh, a milder wind direction and then we're looking mild potentially very mild as we come up towards days 8, 9 and 10 and in the extended too look at this so wafting the wind up from the uh, Azores and the Canary Islands there bathed in those mild upper air temperatures not only across across Eastern Europe though as like the gem is showing um, and we end the uh, East yeah, looking like that gets us to the last day of February and we're still pretty mild with uh, low pressure around green ice and high pressure centred to our south. This is my precipitation forecast based on that ECM run up to day 10 on tometro.com. So a little bit of snow here being predicted um, as we're going into the weekend, especially for northern parts of England. Uh, then we go beyond that, and a lot of dry weather. Some showery bursts coming through later next week. Turning rather wet and windy towards the end of next week, always mostly to the north and to the west. These are the options on the table. Then the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from ECMWF.int today, guess the 23rd of February. 21 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure. Over into the South Country, low pressure is out in the Atlantic. So that can be mostly dry, especially so for the South. And it will be mild. Uh, now we've got 16 with high pressure, more centred towards Scandinavia. So we're going to try and keep things quite cold, I think, with winds in coming from an easterly direction. And um, then we've got 14 here looking uh, much more unsettled with low pressure in from the Atlantic. Will be mild, but uh, much more unsettled with those 14. And then in two weeks' time, this is the option that we've got. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles, all of them, with low pressure out Iceland, high pressure from the Azores in France, and winds coming from a generally westerly direction. So unsettled but mild there as we get to uh, month's end. So let's read to you finally. These are 500 millibar high tsunamis broken down into weekly periods. The first week period takes us from the 13th to the 19th of February. But next week we're blocking to the north. Or low pressure to south. And winds still coming in from generally quite a cold easterly direction. But uh, week two shows a change. It's going to be the 20th, 26th of February. High pressure to over Scandinavia but orientated differently with low pressure out in the Atlantic. Means that we should be drawing up a milder southerly to southwesterly flow and then week three it <laughs> looks like this is gonna be the 27th of february to 5th of march high pressure still there towards scandinavia and trying to bring the wind around to more of an easterly uh actually that could be a little bit colder again uh week four another change it's the 6th to 12th of march low pressure then heading in from the atlantic so obviously much more unsettled with westerlies as high pressure retreats back to the west of Russia. We shall see about that. I reckon we're going to have a pretty mild sort of final uh, week or so of uh, February anyway. And um, I think a little bit of a little bit of the spring will be in the air, actually, for the last week to 10 days of February. So if you're waiting for that, then I think it's on the way and uh, enjoy it. May not last. We're getting to March. If I have an SSW, might be back to colder weather later in March. But for a while, I think we are going to have some uh, early spring weather. Uh, anyway, if you enjoy the content at the moment, please can you consider giving us a donation through our paper page. Page link is in the description with the uh, video. Donate what you want. We'll give you a shout out in the videos. It's helping to pay uh, for Gals Weather. So thanks so much everyone for doing that. And make sure you subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe uh, as well. Like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. 
and we thank you so, so everyone for uh, doing that. And just start having on the channel tomorrow, we're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, Jamie Friday, 10 to 14 day, uh, and uh, we're going to be live with Pub Run as well tomorrow. So, uh, I'll see you for that one. For this one, that's all about. We've got through a video about a car, have I? <laughs> Makes a change. Um, anyway, for this one, that's all about. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your um, Thursday. And bye for now.